What about making your sound better? Hey guys, I'm Dominic from WA Production. We're here with Laidback Luke, who's performing today in Prague. So, how are you today? How was your flight? Yeah, all good. A bit of a long flight. I came from America today, but uh, I can't complain. I'm super excited for tonight. Okay, that's cool. We're also excited for you. So, I would like to ask you about a few questions about you producing music. What do you prefer as a DAW software? My uh, DAW is Ableton. Mm -hmm. I've been using Ableton only uh, since 2009. I had a, like a whole whole range, so I've been producing for more than 25 years now. I started with Cubase on Atari, then Logic, then Fruity Loops, and then Ableton. So you're well informed with all the softwares? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I mean, if uh, 1999 uh, Cubase still counts, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, what kind of computer do you like to use? Do you prefer Windows or Mac? So the reason I stepped away from uh, using Fruity Loops was because I was uh, getting so fed up with uh, Windows XP. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it anymore. My plugins kept on like failing, and so I, I just switched. And then I switched uh, to Ableton with a with a MacBook. Okay, cool. What kind of synthesizers do you like to use, or maybe some other effects that you use throughout making music? Yeah, nothing really special. Obviously, Serum is super popular mm -hmm. right now. I actually I uh, dived back into using Massive again, which mm -hmm. is interesting. Um, Serum, of course, I, I, I just remember when... Uh, oh, no, Silent. I remember when Silent uh, came out. was one of the first that uh, I started to use that. Mm -hmm. And fun fact, uh, the, the lead, uh, the lead uh, synth in Turbulence is, uh, is from the Silent. Okay, that's really interesting. So... Uh You've been doing graffiti when you were younger. Do you help? Uh, do you use the ways of your art at that time to make music? Have you ever, like, uh, mi mixed it up with your knowledge? That's a very good point. So there's there's two things in graffiti that I like is that it has a, a hip hop and urban type of feel, and there's the there's the whole artistic thing where you have. The coloring and the outlines and you get to work with these patterns that are very complicated mm -hmm. but then at the end they all fit together and this is how I see my music as well so I always want my music to have a little bit of an edge and I'm talking to you beginner producers out there that want to EQ the tracks to be perfect and perfectly clean this is the trend right now um, and where I came from, it's more of like an era, like, you know, the Wu-Tang Clan. Go and listen to some of the cream Wu-Tang Clan. The mix down is horrible. <laughs> but the feel, it's raw, it's from the streets. And, and this is what I want to keep in my music as well. So sometimes when you hear a remix from me, it's like a little bit rough in the EQ. And I love that. I want that in music. This gives music character. And if you strip it all away, you'll just sound like everyone else. So do you, uh, when you master your tracks and mess with the EQ, do you rather prefer having it kind of off in a way? Or do you prefer having some songs that would be perfectly mastered and perfected? It depends on the song, but what, what I really think is a problem right now is that everyone sounds alike. So the, mm -hmm. the professional producers as well, I believe about 80% of the professional producers use uh, wired to master their tracks and so nowadays all of those tracks sound alike i am looking for character in a track and this is why i am very very picky on on mastering my own tracks myself because then it it's really from me and it's really from me from the the start to the finish and i would encourage all young producers to start learning to master as well um because you can just be so proud to have the the track that comes out. It's it's really your track all the way, and everything that's in there was meant to be that way by yourself. Yes. So that's cool. So I'd also like to talk about your label, Mix Mash. How did that start? Oh, well, Mix Mash started as a, obviously a platform to release my own music, but most importantly, music uh, from all the talents that I was supporting and that I was coming across. Mm -hmm. So this started uh, back in the day. I had my laid-back Luke forum, and it was just a guest book. 
But on that guest book, I had so many beginner producers coming in and asking me questions about producing and I helped develop a couple of them and, and they started sending me demos and more demos and some of them got like really good demos and I didn't have a platform to release that on and so I, at, at one point I was like, I just need a label for myself and all of these talents can release through my label and, and this is why we have a couple of very big names right now that released on Mixmash Records for the very first time. And who are maybe some of those big names that you have under you? Well, two of my biggest uh, were uh, Avicii, may he rest in peace. Uh, he had his uh, first shots on Mix Mash Records. Afrojack as well, I remember pushing him to do like a remix for the Swedish House Mafia. And uh, a lot of names, Dairo, Nicky Romero was on my forum, Steve Angelo was on my forum, Bingo Players was on my forum, Bart B. I can go on, man. Well, people are, people are all the time sending you some of their track songs that they're making. How do you choose which uh, songs you would like to release and which you'll like to release maybe some other time? Or do you have a specific order of doing this? It's a very interesting question because I um, often get this asked like mm -hmm. okay so you're a young producer you want me to sign your track what should should you do and I always think of the tracks uh, like this can I can I play them in my sets okay. and, and, and that's it I just really want something that I can play in my sets that will stand out say for instance uh, you're a young producer and you made you know Showtech Buya. Mm -hmm. say you're a young producer and you have a track as big as Showtech Buya, and I would hear it for the first time and it would blow me away right that's what I want from every demo something that blows me away and something that I can play that's interesting so when you play uh, you're not a DJ that prepares his sets you do anything everything on the spot yes is that true that's very true that's the only way to really DJ and the only way you have fun in DJing everywhere you go the thing with is with a lot of like very specifically pre-planned sets is that whenever you hit the podium and you see the crowd and the track you pre-planned is about to drop and a real DJ could say oh man this wasn't the right track on the right time I, I had planned it before but now I'm here and it's uh, the sun is out and there's way more girls than say bass house lovers now I'm gonna drop this bass house track and the girls will walk walk away so it's nothing is more powerful than on the spot seeing what those say is a lot of 18 year old girls want maybe you know instead of bass house they want to hear Dua Lipa so there you are okay I'll play some Dua Lipa and then go into some future house instead of bass house so uh, a lot of times people underestimate this and this is actually the most powerful thing in DJing yes okay so uh, your aid you play on the Denon players uh, do you prefer them more over than pioneers, or how would you maybe say the differences between the between them are that you would prefer for yourself? It's a very interesting question. Uh, when Denon first came to me in 2016, they were like, "We're developing a new CDJ. Would you be interested?" And I said, "No, I'm fine on Pioneer. I have my CDJs. I can, but." But they kept on pushing and they said, you know what, you should feel this player. We have developed it, might be next level. And so I felt the player and I was instantly like, whoa, this is really next level. So then and there I decided to switch. And the difference is obviously you have a, like a very smart audience, but I'll keep it very dumb so everyone can understand this. The difference is, okay, so let me ask you a question. What iPhone did you have in 2012? 2012 I had a Samsung oh, okay but Sa <laughs> which which Samsung did you have I think it was the first Galaxy or the second one okay. something like that so the Pioneer players came out in 2012 mm -hmm. so this would be the same as you calling with the first Galaxy phone mm -hmm. and I'm calling with the S10 that's the difference and so you know we're all like excuse my language we're all like phone fuck boys whenever the new phone comes out we're like oh we need to have the new phone well the Denon players are the new DJ decks and a lot of you DJs are playing on technology that's from 2012 and you get just got to realize that like oh it's old I understand okay so that's cool so 
thank you for your time for this thank interview. You. I hope that your show today goes great. And I also have a small gift from you from WA Production. Hey. It's a USB that's filled with sound samples, packs, presets, and all the goods that you Sweet. would ignite. The new hits are right here. Yes. Thank you guys for watching and stick till next time. See ya.